In 2002, Lego launched three of the probably most legendary sets when it comes to trains. And that was the uh, Santa Fe Super Chief, the locomotive, a set uh, of which you could build three different rail cars, a uh, roomette sleep sleeper, a observation car and a dining car. So you had obviously to buy one set for each, uh, but you could decide which one you wanted to build from that. And then a third set that you could build either a railroad, post office or a baggage car from. These sets obviously are nearly 20 years uh, discontinued. And the price for these today is quite high. If you can find a new sealed in box of these, you can be looking at 400 and upwards at the very minimum. They're very, very sought after. The problem is that it's also not very easy to rebrick them uh, by basically buying the bricks on Bricklink because they were in the period when Lego still had light gray and dark gray and not the current light bluish gray and dark bluish gray. The other problem is that the locomotive existed in two different sets. There was the normal one and the limited edition. And the limited edition uh, specifically had dark gray handlebars, both front and back. Uh, that's one way you can distinguish it. It came with a certificate um, and it came with a numbered tile and a Lego tile. Uh, a one by two tile. These locomotives were numbered from one to nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. I believe there's ten, supposedly ten thousand of these were made, only. And then the normal ones have red handlebars in the front and uh, light grey handlebars in the back. So, the other reason why it's quite expensive to rebrick these is that the red printed windscreen for the locomotive only existed in these two sets it has never been in any other set and the red train base only exists in four sets it's the uh, four five six five is the first one which is the uh, freight and crane railway from 1996 and then there is the Holiday Train 10173. That set is from 2006 and that was the last set to have the red train base. And then obviously the two Santa Fe Super Chief EMD F7 uh, locomotives, they had that. So that part uh, goes quite often for uh, considerable money. So if you, for example, were to buy it on Bricklink now, you can get it as low as, as five euros. So it's not too bad, but a lot of them will charge 10 to 15 euros for that. And that's the same problem that you'll have with the windscreen. The windscreen on, in, in red only existed in the two super chief sets and prices for those start over 30 euros. So it's quite expensive to rebrick the, the train set. Now, I'm lucky enough to have two limited edition locomotives and I have a full set of five rail cars, so three of 10022 and two of 10025. I actually have more than that. And I have also a set that has been rebricked in new gray, so in light bluish gray and dark bluish gray. So uh, that's uh, <laughs> it's lucky for me. But um, when you look inside the locomotive, you can see there's an engine, you can obviously remove that if you want to convert it to power functions or powered up. This train is an original uh, nine volt train. So it was designed for a nine volt motor. The tanks under the locomotive then had to be shortened to make space for, for the locomotive. And that's what you can see on my particular local. And the limited edition, they then came with, as I said, that little Lego tile one by two and a numbered one by two tile, uh, starting with A and then the number A for the A unit, because there is actually also a B unit, but that was never released by Lego. James Mattis, the designer, he created all these sets. My lo lo locomotives are quite early ones. I have uh, one that's A1861. That said, funnily enough, the number tile and the Lego tile were not in, in the same bag as the certificate. Where my second locomotive, the A3811, the two tiles are in the same bag as the certificate. So that's quite interesting. The next car we then have is the baggage car. Inside here you see you have like a, a table with an envelope and a, a cup of coffee and then a space for cargo and some lights. 
the alternative build of that is the railroad post office. Inside here, you have two seats, a cup of coffee, a cup of lights, lots of envelopes. So you can basically have uh, the post officers sort their mail. We then go over to the first of the Lego 10022 sets, and that is the Super Chief dining car. Inside you have seating for four minifigs, some cups, there's a little bar. So the second Lego 10022 set is the observation car. This was always at the end of the train, and you could then look out the back. This was also one of the few cars for seating. The Santa Fe Super Chief didn't have any coach cars. The reason for that was Santa Fe Super Chief was an all Pullman train. So it had all Pullman rail cars and basically it, it had no coach seating. Everybody had ind individual compartments with the sleeping accommodation. It ran from Chicago to LA and I think the time for that was 37 hours, three and a quarter. As you see inside the observation car, you can see there's like a, a luggage a table and um, they're seating for five minifigs and one of them can look out the back. So in the last of the official sets is then the Super Chief Sleeper with the uh, roomettes. As you look inside, it has uh, four compartments with the bed can be put down or when you pull it up, it's basically walled to the next compartment and there's also a sink at the end of the rail car. James Mattis didn't stop there. These, these are the sets that Lego released. But James Martis actually designed more sets. They were just never released by Lego. And the first of these sets is the B unit. So the B unit is a not manned locomotive um, that basically just uh, gets put into the train as extra power. The Santa Fe Super Chief generally needed four to five locomotives for its consist. So I built B units. I actually built two of them. So I have a full A, B, B, A configuration. And the stickers are actually available from Brick Sticker Shop. Um, they have the official stickers that James Matt has made for the B unit. Inside the B unit, it looks very similar to the F7 locomotive. Um, there is a different tile at the end of the engine, but the engine build itself is the same. The problem is to build one of these, you need more than two locomotive packs. So it would actually be better to use a locomotive pack and then one of 10022 or 10025 to break this together. I bought my bricks secondhand mostly. Well, they have to be secondhand if you use old grace because there is no more new. There's still people selling new, but they are from the early noughties. Like. So I believe around 2010 is when Lego switched out. the. Uh, or the after 2010 sometime they, they switched over to new the new new colors so these colors aren't available anymore but you can find them on bricklink the problem is just the you're generally good fairly pricey so what happened then was i came across uh, a, a pleasure dome at some point santa fe super chief introduced pleasure dome cars to the super chief they had the uh, turquoise launch which was a uh, private dining area that you could reserve space in and when it wasn't reserved then it was open to all travelers on the super chief and i came across a lego model of a pleasure dome car that supposedly had been designed by james mastis and that he had shared like like the b unit that he had shared in the community a collector in germany put this up for sale on ebay and i obviously grabbed that so we have a super chief pleasure dome built from the same type of bricks that the other ones. There's actually the 10022 set. Now, with this, James Mattis had to get creative because you obviously have two levels inside. And so the base is not built of a train base. So when you look at the exploded view of, of, of this rail car, you can see that the whole base is built of plates. And then to achieve a, a lower section, and then the the tank area, so the, the undercarriage area, actually accommodates that you have that lower plan so that you have, have can have a lower plan and a higher plan. There's a different type of train base that you also could achieve that, in, but then you wouldn't have the rounded sides uh, under, the, under the rail car. So this is actually quite nicely done. The idea using these windshields for, for the dome was, was pretty good. And the window on this side of the rail car 
uh, the two middle windows, they are actually not built. So, and that, that was interesting because that uses some te- technique one by ones and and uh, and a little pin to to uh, get these in place. And here's a view from another angle, so you can see down the two seats in, at the lower level are on t- uh, turntables, so they can turn. There's a little staircase there. Um, handles on the right you can see there's like a what probably should resemble a, a toilet or something like that maybe a vending machine but i would say it's probably a toilet that it's, it's supposed to resemble and seemingly james mattis made 12 versions of the pleasure dome vehicle so what you have on screen now is actually uh, the latest one that he made I will probably try to build that at some point. There are no instructions on how to build it, but there there are enough images around that you can figure out what parts he's used and how he's put them together. It's good bit searching on the internet. You will actually find most of the bits and pieces. So and from finding this Pleasure Dome car, I started doing research. And from the point where I was made aware that the Pleasure Dome existed by James Mattis, I found the instructions for the B unit, and then I came across that he actually had made a full set of instructions for five El Capitan high-level cars, rail cars. So over the time frame of a couple of months, I started gathering parts. Um, I had managed to find the instructions. These were sold by James Mattis, but his website doesn't exist anymore. So I found them from somebody who had a copy. And from there on in, I started gathering light gray and dark gray bricks to build this. And there's another problem is that one of the rail cars actually also uses rear windows. So the first of the rail cars from the El Capitan is the dormitory baggage car. This basically has that little scoop on the back where it brings it up from the level of the locomotive or maybe you have a railroad post office in front of it or some other normal sized rail car in front of this and then basically gets steps up to the roof height of the high level cars. Inside you can see there's like two beds. I'm not sure if what, what the purpose was for, for, for these. The second rail car is the transition coach or in, in common talk by people who have worked on the El Capitan, they were called step downs. And what you see is where it connects to the other rail car, so where it connects to the dormitory, dormitory baggage car, the door is at the same level as a low, low as a normal rail car. And then on the other side of it, the door is at the higher level where it, where it then connects to the other high level cars. Inside you can see there's at the lower level one there's like a, a staircase up and then inside you have seating for seven minifigures. Down below there's like an area that's uh, not built where it's probably for baggage and or linen or whatever and then there's a little room on the other side that was like uh, probably uh, maybe for the at- uh, room for the attendant in, in the car. And there is a staircase built with robot arms that comes up in the middle there. And then when you look from the top, you can see down on the staircase that, that goes down down below. Taking the top out, you see the shelves there, another staircase there. It's fairly, fairly few bricks inside, but uh, that's probably also good because these, these rail cars are heavy. So the second rail car then is a coach. That's the same basically as the one before, but it then has both sides the uh, entrance to the next rail car on the high level. And with that, you then have one more seat in the top. Otherwise, the build is very much the same as the transition coach. The third car is the dining car for the El Capitan. Now, this is actually quite interesting because you have seating for six minifigures in the top and you have a little bar, um, again, with uh, with water and um down below, what he did was he put um, red translucent round one by ones, six of them on on the cooker, and then he put black one by two tile modified with, with like grills, little grills on top of it. And it looks pretty good. The other interesting thing is there is actually a food elevator here, and that's again, uh, it's not snot built, but it's you build it and it just slides in in there uh, in behind that. The corner again also downstairs there's a sink and the light he used the uh, everywhere in, in the in the santa fe super chief in el capitan he uses these uh, robot arms for for lights the fourth car is the el capitan sky lounge 
the uh, windows in the top of the rail car only exist in two sets prior and they're fairly old. So they, they're also these, like, they go for 10 to 15 euros minimum a piece. So that becomes a fairly expensive build at that point. Inside you have seating for uh, seven up, uh, up above, two down below. We can see the, the little bar there from the, from the back. And again, a staircase made of robot arms. So, and with that, let's see the consist driving. Uh, I have uh, different recordings from a couple different days. So the layout might be a bit different. And at the end, I also have a ride on camera. Um, enjoy and I put on some music.